welcome to Ask the Educator, a podcast brought to you by Healthmark Industries. Are you a sterile processing technician or manager? Maybe you work in infection prevention or biomedical engineering. Whether you're a frontline tech, endoscopy tech, OR nurse, or surgical services administrator, you undoubtedly have influence in medical device processing at your facility. In each episode, we speak with experts from the Healthmark Clinical Affairs team, industry leaders, or special guests from the trenches to answer your questions and bring you relevant industry information, equipping you for excellence in medical device processing. My name is Kevin Anderson, and I will be your host. Now let's get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Ask the Educator podcast. My name is Adam Okada. Our host, Kevin Anderson, can't be here with us today. Kevin, you are missed. But I do have three of the uh, nominees for the board of directors for HSPA on with me today, uh, Nicholas Day, Stacey MacArthur, and Angela Warner. So welcome, guys, to the podcast. Glad, glad you could be here. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Thanks. Look forward to it. Thank you. Yeah. And Angela, um, I wanted to start with you. So everybody's going to get the same questions, but why don't you start and tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Thank you, Adam, and thank you, thanks again for having us. Um, yeah, so a little bit about me and my background. I started in sterile processing right out of high school, actually started as an intern um, that uh, was able to get me in the doors. And, you know, within a couple of months, I was able to get hired on full time and and worked my way through different and multiple different roles as a, you know, a uncertified tech, became certified and went down to be a coordinator a lead tech supervisor. Um, I moved into regional education, regional management. Um, all along the way, working full time, I, I went back to school and finished my degree in chemistry with three kids, and really stayed busy. It was it was a lot, but I loved it, and I loved I had that passion, and really fell in love with sterile processing along the way. And now I'm going on to almost 21 years within the field, and I've been part of HSPA formerly Ocean for almost 17 years, and I've loved every bit of it. Sounds great. I'm, you know, I've been three kids too. It's not an easy road. So I appreciate that. Uh, Nicholas, let's go over to you, Nicholas Day. All right. Again, thanks, Adam, for for having me and the team uh, of candidates, uh, nominees on the call today. Uh, my name, as you alluded to, is Nicholas Day. Um, I reside in the Cleveland, Ohio area. So I um, had the pleasure and desire to work in healthcare now for the past 17 to 18 years. Um, I started my career out at the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, health system uh, for the first 12 or so years, um, gaining, you know, numerous and valuable experiences on every level, um, inside and outside of sterile processing and endoscopy. Um, an opportunity arose for me to continue my growth um, in leadership and transition uh, down the street to university hospitals, uh, which, you know, is a competitor, but also a collaborator in the area. Um, and I currently work at two of the regional medical centers on the west side of Cleveland. Um, I manage, like I said, two, two separate centers. Uh, two of the departments are sterile processing, um, one being uh, including high-level disinfection, and a third one is uh, equipment management, which I deal with um, critical care, uh, code cards, equipment, nursing DME equipment, um, and everything uh, from the nursing support service perspective. Uh, I started out like most in, you know, in an entry level role uh, as a frontline tech where you know, I not only had to put the time and effort in to become an expert in the field, um, but also learn to work with uh, various teams um, and collaborate. Um, from my early start in sterile processing, I developed a, you know, an ultimate sense of satisfaction for how the role contributed contributes to quality patient care. Uh, my passion, commitment to sterile processing, you know, from the education, knowledge, learning, leadership, operational effectiveness, and healthcare as a whole has driven me to uh, remain highly committed to, you know, this, this amazing industry that we're currently in. Um, I've developed or assisted with, you know, creating numerous, you know, different increases in um, technology or process improvement. Um, you know, transitioning competencies from a paper-driven process to digital, uh, pro, you know, quality improvement, um, different methodologies there, policy design, productivity model, you know, creation, chargeback model creation, and more. Um, I've been uh, involved with our local Northeast Ohio Central Service Association for about a decade, 
uh, where I've served in different capacities on the board, uh, you know, serving as a marketing communications committee leader, uh, where, you know, I set up, um, you know, a conference from A to Z. Uh, we've been, had you out, Adam, which is, you've been a great speaker at some of our events and Kevin as well. Yeah, happy to be there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, uh, you know, right now currently serve as the VP of the chapter where I work closely with the president um, to uh, pretty much every aspect of the operations of events and communication and uh, networking with our industry in the area. Um, you know, I very much value our ability to have those chapters uh, where we continue to network, educate and attract employees and it locally remain highly passionate and focused uh, to our industry. Uh, you know, volunteering my free time dedicated to that learning and education, education, research and networking um, virtually and in person. Yeah, fantastic. And the local chapter is really the the boots on the ground, right? It's HSP is a big organization, but the local chapters, it, it's a lot of individual work to reaching out to those members. So appreciate that. And then Stacey MacArthur, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself a little about your background? Thank you so much for the opportunity um, to introduce myself to your uh, to your listening audience. So my name is Stacey MacArthur. I'm the manager of sterile processing at Providence Portland Medical Center in Portland, Oregon. I've been a sterile processing professional for 34 years. Um, within that 34 years, I worked in very large facilities, small community hospitals, and supported sterile processing and medical mission trips in Guatemala. Um, I have uh, worked as a frontline technician, a lead, educator, manager, I teach sterile processing and surgical technology at the local community college. Um, I hold four certifications from HSPA. I too am very active in our local chapter um, and I've served HSPA as a subject matter expert and as well as been on their awards committee. I am passionate about sterile processing and I really would like the opportunity to serve and make a difference, continue to make a difference in the field. Fantastic. And yeah, I mean, I can I can feel the passion from all you guys and really anybody who gets to the point where they're nominated and accept that nomination for HSPA. Uh, it's such an impressive thing and really means that you care a lot about the industry to do this. You don't get paid. It's volunteer work, right, to be on the board. So appreciate you guys, um, you know, being here on the podcast with us and again, sharing your knowledge with the industry. But I'm going to go back to Angela and go ahead and ask uh, this first question here. So what do you think is an issue that is important to the average HSPA member. I'm a HSPA member myself. Uh, so what's a, a, an issue you feel like is important to us and how can the board help? I think with me and what I think with what the techs are looking at, the two biggest issues are going to be compensation. I know is a big one that we talk about a lot. Um, you know, FPD, it, it, we require a unique set of skills, not only, you know, for what we do day to day, and yet we're still paid at an entry level position um, starting out. So I think that is a huge concern of, of the staff. Um, another one I, I feel passionate about is staffing levels and looking at what does it take to make sure that we have those safe staffing levels within the department to provide safe patient care. Um, I think those are the two biggest issues that I'm passionate about. Um, and the board can really remain that strong voice for the members and and advocate for the sterile processing professionals worldwide. Um, if it's, you know, recommending staffing level matrix, if it's, you know, continuing, you know, they're doing a lot of work and with legislation and, you know, that required certification and continuing to support that. Um, those are the things that I think are, are going to be a huge, a huge push here in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Major issues to the uh, compensation and staffing. It is usually the first two complaints. Uh, from your average sterile processing technician, right? Uh, Nicholas, I'm going to have the same question over to you. What's an issue that's important to the average member and how can the board help? Yeah, like likewise, uh, you know, from Angela here, I believe that, you know, the average HSPA member or sterile processing professional in the industries are uh, most focused on compensation, but also education, from my opinion. Um, not all HSP members, you know, whom are working the front lines have the time or determination to dedicate their free time to, you know, furthering themselves outside of their job simply just because of life or motivation. Um, that is where it's, you know, vitally important for HSPA and the board to um, become advocates for our industry and these, you know, frontline technicians. Um, I feel that HSPA you know, the past, the current board members have done an amazing job adapting to the industry and healthcare landscape um, by creating, you know, this heightened awareness of our industry 
and aligning that with, you know, HSPA's mission, you know, patient safety, education, professional development, certification, advocacy, communication, representation for, for all sterile processing professionals. Uh, even the name change alone from, you know, ISHM to HSBA, they're really streamlining and making the association easier to be found and um, relevant to the industry, in my opinion. Uh, we need to continue to explore, you know, and implement unique ways to bring a heightened awareness to sterile processing through education and, and advocate for um, certification mandates and compensation improvement um, and really you know, provide that data to our, you know, governments, regulatory bodies, and, you know, really gain that um, advocacy from them as well. Yeah. And that's honestly, that's something I'm passionate about too, getting sterile processing in front of C-suite, in front of the nurses so that they are aware and know what happens. Uh, Because I think they think of it as a background entry-level position. And there's so much science and technology that goes into what we do now. It's completely different landscape. So I appreciate that. And then Stacy, why don't I uh, give that same question over to you? What's an issue that's important to the HSPA member and how can the board help with it? Thank you so much for the opportunity to answer this question. You know, I was, I was thinking a lot about this and I, uh, I was thinking about the average, you know, HSPA represents um, over 48,000 um, certified um, technicians and, um, and we're very diverse. And so what does average look like? Um, so I wanted to take a different spin on that. I wanted to sort of say, you know, I think we need to, if we really want to elevate the profession, we need to take care of our newest and most vulnerable technicians. I really want to serve the frontline techs who um, may have started out being required to get certification, but along the way, they learned and grasped the magnitude of what they do for a living. Um, I want to serve the technician who cares deeply about patient care, but because of whatever reason, they may not have the resources or the leadership to get that within their own departments. I've met a ton of sterile processing professionals who um, have sterile process or have managers or supervisors who don't understand sterile processing. They don't know how to get a hold of any guidelines. They don't know what ST79 is. Um, and so we need to elevate those most vulnerable members if we want to elevate the entire profession as a whole. Um, I think HSPA is uniquely um, equipped to take care of all technicians, regardless of where they are in their trajectory. But in short, I really just think of it's our job to provide resources, build skills, and provoke, promote confidence and pride in our work. Yeah, great answer. And I, as a technician myself who worked for a furniture store manager and somebody who did logistics at a prison and a paper salesman, like I had a lot of different managers that never had any hospital experience, let alone SPD. So giving those technicians help with navigating that, how do we improve our situation when we have somebody in charge that really doesn't kind of know what we do? So I appreciate that a lot. Um, Angela, I'm going to send this next question back over to you. How can the board positively impact the reprocessing industry as a whole? Yes, I think remaining um, that strong voice for sterile processing and really having that foundation for them to go to and um, advocating for the regulation and the standards and uh, providing those tools for if it's the technician for their education, if it's for the leaders or the managers. Um, and also remaining, you know, in those strong relationships and cultivating new relationships in the industry and building on that um, collaboration, I think is going to be huge for the board of directors. And they already are doing a great job. And I, you know, really just building on that. Um, one thing I always like to say too is, you know, not sticking with the status quo and really seeing, you know, what can we do differently to, you know, let's think outside the box. I think that's a huge thing as well. Yeah. And, and it's always needed, right? If you do things the same way, you're always going to get the same results. So if you got to try new things to kind of mix things up and, and we're, what we're doing is working to a certain extent, there are people who are more aware, but we still need that awareness to get out further. Right. So Nicholas, same question over to you. How can the board positively impact our industry? So first and foremost, yeah, ton, tons of different ways. But uh, the most important, I think, is, you know, kind of, as I alluded to before, being being that advocate for the frontline technicians, we we know that uh, most leaders are very involved with additional education and awareness of our um, you know certification bodies that are out there and uh, stay up to date on you know trending news and things like that. But uh, when you get down to the level of you know those other thirty five thousand thirty to thirty five thousand 
individuals in the association. I think, you know, streamlining um, process, helping to streamline processes across the nation or internationally, um, you know, digitization digitalization of um, not only marketing of HSPA, um, but also like helping to uh, make things digital at within our organizations and standardize that across the, the nation, um, such as education um, is one big one that we can digitalize. Um, advocacy again uh, is is I think the biggest one, but continual assessment through industry surveys so that we can um, continually get feedback to help um, positively impact our industry. Um, I think we can sit here and think of ideas that we feel uh, as a board or as HSPA that are going to help, but if we're not getting the actual word on the street uh, from our family and in the reprocessing world, we're not going to know what the issues really are uh, because it changes on a daily basis and a yearly basis. And um, this, it'll never change. There's going to be new devices coming out that uh, have new reprocessing methods, new methods and um, products and services um, that we just need to continually educate on and uh, make sure that uh, we as an industry are up to date. Yeah, this industry is ever evolving. It never stays the same. There's always new products, new things, new processes, new uh, you know standards coming out constantly. So you know, and, and we're constantly reverse to change in sterile processing. We hate it, but we have to. We have to adapt and we have to evolve. And getting that word to as many people as we can so vitally important. Stacy, how can the board help with the overall health of the industry? Sure. Um, I believe that the board is already making a positive impact um, in the reprocessing industry, but I think um, I think that they can continue to do so by providing quality education programs, promoting the networking that they, they do, and collaboration, and also equipping the local chapters. And I've seen a, a, a real um, swing in that direction in the last couple of years of really helping the you know the larger organization helping the individual chapters. Um, a lot of sterile processing techs aren't able to attend national conferences. They don't have the resources to be able to take a week off to go to to go to Las Vegas. Um, they're holding the fort back while their manager goes or whatever. Um, so being able to, those people need to be able to look to their local chapters for um, education and for networking. Um, and, that, and that deserves to be quality products as well. Um, I think also additionally, um, the board using their collective influence to continue to have seats at the table when it comes to writing and reviewing the standards, um, working with instrument manufacturers. I mean, I think we've all seen the tale of two IFUs where one IFU is, tells you nothing. I mean, it really, it's so vague that it doesn't tell, it's not helpful at all. And then the other IFU is so specific and so detailed that you wonder how it's sustainable in a real operation, you know, and so really, um, making those tools helpful for the end users so that they actually can use those documents to promote um, safe patient care. I'm not the brightest, uh, you know, sharpest tool in the shed or any of those analogies you want to use. So when I would look at IFUs, it would be very confusing for me. I was constantly trying to figure out how do I interpret? What does this mean? Um, you know, the, making it very clear so that anybody can understand it when you're in crunch time and you really just need to process this thing is a vitally important thing. So IFUs is a huge one. Uh, so last question for you guys, and this is your chance. You're going to get to brag about yourselves. I know it's not comfortable for a lot of us, uh, but why should the HSPA member who's a voting member, why should they cast their vote for you? And I will start with Angela again. Yes, I think, you know, once you get to know me, I am a very dedicated and hardworking individual. And I really have that passion for sterile processing and for patient safety. Um, anybody that knows me knows they will say education is a huge, huge drive of mine and making sure to bring along all of the team and and making sure we're all comfortable with the work that we're doing and we have the tools that we need. Um, having that background of not only the technical knowledge and expertise, but also, you know, leading into that leadership and education, you have that foresight, um, that strategic foresight of what is the big picture? What are we trying to achieve? What can we do better? Um, I want to be that voice for the members and I want to support them and um, continue to support HSPA's mission and vision as well and, and bringing along these like-minded individuals and 
you know, we all have this passion for excellence. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing this. This isn't the most uh, recognized position, but we do it because we love it. Um, and I want to be that voice for the team and and for the members. Yeah, if you want recognition, we, we're in the wrong industry. This is not the industry that gets a ton of recognition from anyone. So appreciate that answer. Uh, Nicholas, over to you. Why should the HSBA member cast their vote for you? Thanks, Adam. Um, and I would just like to say thank you for um, those that are, have already voted. Um, and, uh, you know, if you haven't, make sure you get out there and do vote. Um, you know, read the bios and the vid- you know, watch the videos. Um, check out the candidates that are available to, for you to vote for. I know that if I'm voted in office, you know, I bring that um, my tenure of dedication and passion um, you know, and pledge to continue v- devoting um, the spare time I've already devoted uh, outside of my, you know, my normal job. Um, you know, I've done that for a long time, uh, at least a decade of doing, you know, additional, um, you know, extracurricular activities such as uh, the, the chapter, local chapter and, um, you know, educational activities outside of uh, my normal job. So, you know, I want to bring that knowledge, expertise, and passion to you know, a higher level where I can you know, help um, each HSPA member's voice um, not only be heard, but um, help collaborate with the uh, rest of the board and HSPA to um, operationally and effectively make changes within our industry that will um, help guide the success and um, efficiency of our, you know, our great industry, um, fostering, building collaborative relationships with the rest of the board, um, so that we can, as a team be successful and, um, drive growth for myself through the experience, uh, and create value for our, our great industry. So thank you again. Yeah. And that's really the point. We want to get value for the membership, right? We want to be able to make changes that can positively impact them. So great answer. Uh, and Stacy, over to you. Uh, why should the HSPA member cast their vote for you? Well, first and foremost, I want to encourage the members that it's important to vote, even if it's not for me. It's important to vote. Um, the board exists to represent the best interests of sterile processing professionals. That being said, I would like to be that someone who um, continues to advocate and promote quality and professional pride. Um, I'm at a place in my life now where I have the time and the energy and the credibility and the confidence to be able to give back to my colleagues and I would love the opportunity to, to do that. Um, the great news for our voting members is that this is a, um, all the candidates um, have impressive resumes and um, I do believe that the membership is gonna be in great hands no matter who is elected, but I really would love the chance to to serve my colleagues. Yeah, fantastic answer. And I agree with what you just said. Everybody on the ballot is amazing. Like I, I read their bios and and everybody is so accomplished. And thank you guys for just being open to running for these positions because, again, it's volunteer basis. You don't get a lot of recognition out of it. It's a lot of hard work, a lot of hours that you put in. So thank you guys for doing that and being on the podcast with us here today. We appreciate you being here. If you're an HSPA member, go out and vote. We've got three great candidates here. We do have another podcast with the other three candidates for the board of directors. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Bye, everybody. All opinions expressed on this show are those of the presenters. Before using any medical device, it is important to review the device manufacturer's instructions for use.